P12 stands for Dirty Dozen. Six in the group, but we have uh, two identities. I was Slim Shady back then, but, but I was also Eminem. I'm Swift, a.k.a. Swifty McVeigh. Well, I'm Proof. Big proof of we beef in Kanai, but that's my rap name. That's why I go by. I don't really go with Rondell Bean. That's my that's my alias. Bazaar. Alias uh, Peter Ash Bazaar. Kanai is just, of course my my name in, in D12. And my alias is uh Mr. Porter, which is I got a lot of different aliases. Depends on what bar you catch me at and what drink I'm drinking. D12. A Detroit-based rap group fronted by Eminem formed in the mid-1990s and rose to mainstream prominence in the early 2000s. Both of their albums Devil's Night and D12 World went platinum and their single My Band reached number one on the rhythmic top 40. But as time passed, the group slowly became less active and in 2018, Eminem released the apology track to his D12 members titled Stepping Stone, which ends with the bar, it's not goodbye to our friendship, but D12 is over. D12 was one of the hugest rap groups of the aughts. They were all super talented and came with a cosign from the highest selling rapper of all time. Despite this, none of them gained any traction to solo acts. So what went wrong? As a group, D12 had gone through an inordinate amount of tragedies and hardships. In 1999, Bugs, one of the MCs on the roster, was murdered at a picnic. Then in 2006, Proof, another member of D12, was fatally shot. Eminem has cited Proof's death as one of the main turning points that led to the group falling apart, rapping, I just noticed the oomph was gone when we go in the booth. Cause the truth is, the moment that Proof died, so did the group. A decent chunk of D12's trajectory can be traced in Stepping Stone. By the time that D12 released their first album, Devil's Night, in 2001, the group consisted of Eminem, Proof, Bazaar, Swifty McVeigh, Mr. Porter, and Kaniva. By then, Eminem was a household name and lightning rod of controversy, functioning as the perfect boogeyman for the parents of Bush era Middle America. Every member of D12 shared Eminem's penchant for provocative, controversial lyrics and graphically crude and dark humor. The psychedelic hardcore drug anthem Purple Pills feels like a dare instructor's worst nightmare, and explicit sexual tracks like Nasty Mind and Pimp Like Me had the kind of rampant, tongue-in-cheek misogynistic humor that you'd frequently only hear at comedy club open mic nights. The album is dark and upsetting, but frequently brilliant. Every member of the group effectively used their platform to introduce themselves to mainstream audiences as talented, lyrical supervillains who could eat up any beat, and the album was a hit. The success of the album earned D12 a spot on the Warp Tour, which they ultimately were kicked off of after members of the group got into a physical fight with Esham over lyrics insulting Eminem's daughter. During the three-year period between Devil's Night and D12 World, D12 appeared on When the Music Stops on the Eminem Show and the Tech 9 song She Devil, as well as on the official soundtracks for 8 Mile and Barbershop. Despite all this traction, they still seemed to be stuck in Eminem's shadow, touring without him while he recorded his 2004 album Encore. On My Band, the first single from D12 World, and the group's biggest radio hit, they parody and playfully wink at Eminem, constantly hogging their spotlight. D12 World had the same mixture of goofball energy and horror movie-esque violence that made Devil's Night a success. It ended up selling even more than Devil's Night, going double platinum. This is when members of the group knew it was time to branch out and use this momentum for their solo careers. Bizarre, as reflected in his name, was by far the biggest oddball in the group, with his gross-out humor and overall absurdity cranked up to 11. In 2005, he released his solo album Handicap Circus under Sanctuary Urban. In Stepping Stone, Eminem praises Handicap Circus's lead single, Rockstar, calling it the sh and taking blame for not helping to make it more of a huge hit. The album received mediocre reviews, with critics wondering if Bizarre's over-the-top humor and horrorcore sensibilities are meant to be only ingested in small doses. But despite bad critical reception, Handicap Circus was entertaining, creative, and genuinely funny. That same year, Proof released his sophomore solo album Searching for Jerry Garcia under Iron Fist Records. Like Handicap Circus, a tribute to Jerry Garcia released on the 10-year anniversary of his death, it had a rugged, underground feel to it. It received critical praise. It's worth noting that neither of the albums were released by Shady Records. Neither of these albums came close to the same sales as the D12 details, but in their defense, neither seemed like they were aiming to. Handicap Circus was far too strange, silly, and dark for Bizarre to seemingly be trying to create something mainstream, and searching for Jerry Garcia with its unapologetic avoidance of pop singles and out-of-the-box approach was perhaps too creative and intellectual for the palette of a mainstream audience. Eminem's shadow over D12 continued to grow. When Eminem wasn't a part of their concerts, it wasn't uncommon for teenagers to get bored and heckle D12 shows when they realized M wasn't going to come on stage. D12 took this as motivation to bring the house down, determined to not let being stuck in Eminem's shadow crush their spirits. In April 2006, Proof was killed and things slowly began to fall apart for the group. After appearing on some tracks on the 2006 Shady Records compilation album, The Re-Up, they went on a four-year hiatus. Today, despite over a decade of chatter about a third studio album, the project remains unfinished and stuck in the vault, with no foreseeable plans to ever release it. In 2008, D12 came out of their hiatus and released the mixtape The Return of the Dozen, mostly without Eminem's involvement as he was working on his Relapse album. 
Three years later, they released a follow-up mixtape, The Return of the Dozen Part 2, once again, mostly without Eminem's involvement since he was touring. The mixtape featured the return of Fuzz Scooter, an original D12 member who left in 1999. Around 2010, the group had recorded the song Hit Me With Your Best Shot for Eminem's recovery album, which ultimately didn't make the cut. In 2014, they appeared on the newer Shady Records compilation album, Shady XV, and released their last mixtape in 2015 titled The Devil's Night Mixtape. But with Eminem mostly absent from their songs, eyes weren't on them anymore, and D12 seemed to be stuck in a musical purgatory, wondering what to do next. In 2017, they officially broke up and everyone split up to pursue their solo careers. Mr. Porter became Eminem's hype man for live performances and appearances, and one of M's go-to producers. He has since released multiple EPs and an instrumental album, but never an official full-length solo record. Mr. Porter seems to be more than happy as a successful producer and busy hype man, uninterested in the type of suffocating superstardom that Eminem has, preferring to stay out of the spotlight. Swifty McVeigh has stayed under the radar but remains highly active and has released a large and more than solid collection of solo mixtapes, nine of which you can find on the main streaming services. His most recent project is a collaboration with the group AD Empire, simply titled AD Empire. On the intro track, Swifty makes it clear that he still has nothing but love for his fellow D12 members and that he doesn't harbor an ounce of bitterness. Canava has released four studio albums since 2014, all of them consistently good with the same skilled rapping that made him such a valuable contribution to the group. On Underdog Salute, from his 2020 album Alpha Underdog, he also reiterates that D12's breakup was amicable and that he still respects and supports the other members. Throughout the past 15 years, Bazaar has consistently released new albums and mixtapes, none of which have received much attention. He has been straying further and further away from mainstream sensibilities and deeper into his own twisted world where he embraces the scatological and the morose, crafting songs that make the darkest Slim Shady tunes feel like a Disney musical, and typically going too far. His track, I Love the Babies, was singled out by rap critics as unforgivably repulsive and abhorrent. Bazaar has officially developed a sense of humor that was far too cruel and upsetting to be accessible for anyone but himself. Songs like where he raps from the perspective of the disgraced comedian about f***ing women's drinks feel more lazy than subversive. Bizarre's demented sense of humor, once his greatest attribute, has become his biggest weakness and his own worst enemy. Which leads us to one of the reasons why D12 has lost its mainstream mojo, shock humor. While D12 was always inventive, clever, and genuinely entertaining with their outrageously offensive jokes, shock humor all in all is very much a product of a bygone era and its cultural peak in the 2000s. While there are obviously mainstream exceptions today, like Dave Chappelle keeping it alive, shock humor has mostly dried up as a cultural trend. Now it's seen as somewhat worn and played out. While a spike in offensive comments and behavior has happened with those in power, shock humor now feels like it's aligning with those in power as opposed to fighting it. The generation that grew up on D12 is the same generation of suburban kids who grew up on South Park and Family Guy, sling slurs on Xbox Live, were exposed to the darkest recesses of the internet forums. The 2000s were a time when being disgusted and appalling were exciting attributes for teenagers, particularly suburban teenagers. This era has died, and D12 was an unfair casualty of it. Once again on Stepping Stone, Eminem blames himself for not hooking up D12 with other big artists and helping them network. I think of all the trips to BET and the rappers we could have politicked with and got you some features. Stepping Stone makes it clear that M feels guilt for leaving his D12 comrades out to hang and dry, yelling at himself in the climactic third verse. Is this the kind of karma you get for turning your f back on Busy Kanava and Swift? Eminem, while being one of the greatest rappers alive, has a long history of not doing enough to elevate his shady record signees. While 50 Cent is an obvious exception, artists like Yellow Wolf, Obi Trice, Bobby Creekwater, Stat Quo, and Cassius seem to take a backseat to Eminem's own albums at the expense of their careers. It's worth noting that current shady record artists Grip and Westside Boogie might not be getting the exposure and promo they deserve, and could potentially get more attention if they were on a label like Def Jam or Top Dog. This isn't a diss on Eminem. He's proven himself to be a pure artist, just uninterested in being a businessman. And unfortunately for D12, a decent chunk of M's fan base is white people in middle America who don't typically listen to rap. Eminem himself referenced this on Chloroseptic Remix when he says he cut his fan base in half when he dissed President Trump. In the mid 2000s, I usually hate rap but I love Eminem was an extremely common phrase in the suburbs. Simply put, these types of Eminem fans weren't interested enough in hip hop to follow D12's solo careers. So with the death of Proof rocking the group to its core, mixed in with Eminem's spotty history of promoting his signees, and a white fanbase in middle America that didn't care enough about rap to seek out the solo work of any D12 member who wasn't named Marshall, it's no wonder D12 dissipated. But no matter how you spin it, D12 captured an era, and they were nothing short of phenomenal MCs. You know, and we'll always be friends, man. We've always been friends. So we were kids, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So we'll always be good on that aspect, you know? And I wanna help them do whatever whatever it is that their next thing is mm -hmm. on the agenda. You know what I'm saying? Mixtape, album, shopping, 
whatever it is.